uh, very good morning to everybody. Um, today is uh, 21st of September and it's a Wednesday and um, we're going to continue with our Nakshatra series uh, wherever the moon has been transiting every day. Um, the Tithi which is operating today uh, during sunrise um, was, is uh, Panchmi Tithi and uh, the, the star or the nakshatra which is operating at sunrise here in India it is uh, uh, Kritika nakshatra okay so we're going to talk about uh, Kritika and we're going to talk about some of uh, the themes which emanate from Kritika uh, but before we go there uh, let me talk uh, a little bit about the Titi which is operating today which is uh, the Panchami Titi now according to um, Muhurta Chintamani, uh, Panchami, you know, which is the, the fifth lunar day, or it is the fifth relationship between the sun and the moon, is uh, ruled by the primary deity, is the Nagas or the serpents or the Serpas. Now, according to uh, Brahat Samhita by Varaha Mihira, he says, uh, Panchami is ruled by Chandrama or the moon god. So all actions according to Brahat Samhita which are done would be respect to uh, the moon which is the mother, which is the apas, which is the water element, the liquid element. It is to do with uh, emotions. So all these um, activities, you know, or um, activities would be more acceptable during this day. So next uh, nakshatra which is operating today is uh, Kritika. Now the word Kritika comes from um, multiple sources. So one of the source where this uh, the word Kritika comes from Krit means to cut, to divide, to uh, tear to destroy, to trim. So all things which are associated with, uh, you know, uh, where you're talking about cutting, dividing. So you, you can also include all the instruments which are key in enabling you to cut, divide, tear, destroy, trim. So that would be the scissors, uh, you know, sharp equipments like the sword, the knife, the razor. So all these things would be connected with uh, Kritika Nakshatra. Okay. The word Kritika also comes from um, the six mothers who nurtured the young Skanda or Kartikeya or Murugan as he, as he is called in the southern part of India. So you can see a nourishing uh, you know, element also associated with Kritika Nakshatra. Now Kritika by the name also connotates um, the word the Sanskrit word called Kirti. Kirti also means great achievement or monumental feats or monumental deeds that are very famous. So typically what you see with all people who are born with prominent planets in Kritika, in some way they would be able to be great achievers in their life. Uh, they would be able to um, have, you know, be, be doing some monumental work. Okay, So they would also be involved with the purification of the planets whichever are placed in Kritika. So I'll get there and I will speak a little more in detail. But before we go there, let us look at the cosmic configuration of Kritika. Now the cosmic configuration of Kritika emanates from the Shakti which uh, rests within Kritika which is called as Dahana Shakti. Now Dahana Shakti means the power to burn and to purify. Right, so that is the literal meaning: is to go under a cycle of purification and uh, evolution of uh, transformations. So this nakshatra is very strongly connected with purification or purification rites. Now, from an esoteric perspective, whenever you refer to this, it also means that it has got the power. Dahana also means the power to server ties with the corporal right so this fire 
basically is enabling you to be able to cut all ties and to uh, release yourself to purify yourself purify your soul so this is from a necessary perspective now some of the mythological stories and uh, you know scriptures have also mentioned that kritika is the birth star of chandra or the moon so uh, this doesn't come as a surprise why because if you see moon gets exalted at about 3 degrees in taurus right so you can see that uh, people especially who would have their moon in kritika can become um, you know self assertive they could also become critical thinkers that's because you know the word critical also the english word critical also comes from the root word sanskrit word kritika okay so that moon there makes you a very critical thinker however on uh, the shadow side or you see that these people are quite weak, quite emotionally um you know attention seekers you know they could have an emotional side to them which needs constant praise and positive attention so you see that most of the kritikas with their moon there or a sun there or their lagna there or a prominent planet there they tend to be a little more self centered they also tend to be self and agrang uh, agrang um, agrandizing you know they want um applause seeking um they always want to be in the limelight so these are the sort of that is the typical nature of uh, these people because if you look in the vimshotri dasha system kritika nakshatra uh, is ruled by the sun so the sun is the primary source of light and heat and that is why it always wants to take the center stage and be in the limelight of uh, things which are happening so what you generally see especially with uh, from my research i found that kritika men usually have large auras which emanate out of their body um, but that large aura also demands a lot of attention right and uh, just because of this over confidence uh, nature and this large aura bigger than life sort of uh, aura that they want to emanate out and they want to project outside the world um they can be supremely self confident um to the extent whether they are right or wrong it doesn't really matter to them okay they could be also very sharply decisive whether they have enough skills to make a judgment or make a decision whether they have it or not but they are sharply decisive and what i have also seen which uh, works very well with kritika natives is typically you see that they love to take uh, cold water baths why is cold water baths is because there's too much of agni in them especially when we are talking about the first pada of kritika you see that these people have a lot of fire energy because it is mars as well as sun so there is a lot of fire there's a lot of pitta so that is why to cool themselves down these people love cold water baths they love spicy and starchy foods um typically they suffer from because of too much of activity because see both kritika and the nakshatra which is quite opposite to it um is vishaka nakshatra both of these are called as mishra nakshatras which means they are mixed so which means they are either they are both sharp as well as soft so they have these mixed qualities so because of these mixed qualities it can give them or uh, they typically suffer from a lot of activity both these nakshatras are quite active right from a process perspective so they suffer from insomnia because they are highly worked up people right and at the same time they could also suffer from high uh, blood pressure issues as well because of the sun element and because of the activity which is happening in the metabolism right um also what i've seen is uh, these people kritika natives could be quite skillful in handling sharp objects especially blades and knives so you could see a lot of hair stylists barbers uh, beauticians maybe would be associated with uh, or even people who are welders um, you know and people who work with sharp equipments uh, and technologies which involve a lot of skill and precision so you know automobile industry which needs a lot of 
Now, so, so all these technology manufacturing, uh, which needs uh, precision and great amount of skills uh, with handling, um, you know, sharp objects is what uh, I've seen that they, these people could be quite good at. Now, some of the key traits that I've seen with Critica, which emanates very uh, commonly, uh, is uh, you see that the Critica often is a very successful in public life. But whenever they draw themselves in, in their private life, they could be quite moody. Right. However, this uh, nakshatra also has uh, um, a flavor of spirituality in them. So they are spiritually aware and uh, this makes them undergo extreme purification uh, process or experiences in life, which could be a lot of highs and lows that they go through. Right. Uh, now, the animal symbol, which is associated with uh, Kritika, is uh, a goat um, or a ram. Now, if you look at the traits of a ram, you would see, you would maybe you would connect it with Kritika and say, Kritika natives typically would be quite aggressive and stubborn, uh, just like the goat. They are quite obstinate and uh, very rebellious sort of people. So they are out of box thinkers, but at the same time, they want it always their way or it is the highway. So that is the the key element of Kritika Nakshatra. Uh, but remember, when I say this, there is a Mishra element to all these things because they also have the softer qualities that they can project and they also have the sharp nature. So they always flip flop between these two things. So uh, their, their nature is quite extreme. So, you know, whenever they are in, um, in a mood to, to argue, they're quite quarrelsome. Um, and if it is, uh, if you have planets there which are tamasic, which is more to do with you know uh, tamasic planets like Saturn, Rahu, um, Mars, uh, and even the Sun can give them um, you know sometimes can give them because Sun is also called as a Krura planet, so it can give them a, abusive tendencies. You know, largely, these people have a combative nature with a, a fiery disposition. So. You can see that these people have, uh, you know, they could be uh, short-tempered. They could have a very sharp tongue. Um, they could be harsh, harsh speakers. Um, and um, there is another trait that I've seen because of this precision, skill, and um, interest in being, you know, wanting to do their jobs. They dislike imperfection, right? So these people, you could see that they have. Uh, uh, this tendency to look for perfection in everything that they want to do, right? Now, um, having said that, because it's a Mishra Nakshatra, I've also seen that the natives could be, um, could have a very cutting wit with which they speak. But often you see that their wit usually uh, has overtones of sarcasm or critical speech in them because that is the Mishra native. You know, even though when they want to uh, uh, you know give praise to somebody there could be a sarcastic element somewhere very hidden within that language which they try to put so um, I was reading about this uh, uh, one of these ancient classic called the Ivagnya Vilasa where uh, what the Ivagnya Vilasa says is uh, these people you know, typically want to uh, perform duties for the sake of false prestige and show, right? Kritika is all about false prestige and show. That's because they want to be in the limelight. They want to be like the sun, you know, always shining. Um, and on the negative side, what they work in Vilasa says is these people could be gluttons. They could have a very high appetite. They could have a great, uh, you know, digestive uh, system. Um, and uh, they could be fond of uh, very spicy food. Uh, at the same time, they would be very well versed in uh, scriptures, academically be very good. Um, there is also this common theme which emanates from Kritika, which means fondness for the opposite sex. Um, or they, they could be quite bright in appearance, um, and Daivak Milasa also states that, uh, you know, these people could be quite misers, you know, misery sort of people. 
Um, and you can always see them, they have a sort of a worried look or a worried nature. But having said all of that, the positive side of Kritika, which they work in Vilasa says they have widespread fame. They, they enjoy widespread fame. It's just like the, like the fire which runs amok, you know, when it is uncontrolled. Um, and, and that is why you see uh, that although a Kritika might have a very critical nature, uh, but they could be quite creative uh, and also at the same time be destructive. Uh, in in, uh, in the tendency in how they would evolve uh, as the soul evolves. Now, also what you see with the Kritika Nakshatra is um, these people could have great mastery or panditri over mantras or uh, they could be great commentators of shastras. They could be expert uh, experts in religious scriptures. Um, you know, so. Uh, incantations of mantras uh, could be a great ability that Kritika Nakshatras uh, have. So, but um, on all the positive side, what you also see with Kritika is these people have uh, amazing willpower. Um, they show a lot of uh, independence in the work they want to do, and they want to show uniqueness um, and uh, in, in the uh, and the capacity to support others. This is another team that I've also seen, which emanates from uh, Kritika. Now, um, although this Kritika also means because of its association with um, the commander of the gods, um, Kartikeya, you can see the star also with a lot of courage. Um, there is sort of a fighting spirit, which is there. So any planet which falls in Kritika can give you this tendency of, uh, you know, wanting to uh, battle uh, battle it out in life and try to achieve this process of awareness and purification. So this is how this Kritika, uh, the planet's position, were posited in Kritika would always evolve um, over the lifespan of the native is through showing courage, through showing solidarity, through, through showing morality, through showing purity, uh, through showing um, uh, virtues, you know, and uh, trying to achieve this purification process. But when these planets which are sitting there come under uh, a lot of tamasic influence from uh, malefics, that's when you can see the reverse, uh, you know, tendencies uh, working uh, on these uh, natives. So when these reverse tendencies or the reverse influences you see from malefics or tamasic grahas, you see that these people could tend to be uh, very rash in their movements. Sometimes they are very direct in their actions um, and they could create uh, situations of dispute, war or battles. So this is what you see from the, the, the shadow side of uh, Kritika Nakshatra. Now, uh, Kritika is associated with Agni. So this Nakshatra, Kritika, was also called as Ayushmat, right? Now, if you look at the Sanskrit translation of this word Ayushmat, it means long-lived, alive, possessed of vital power and healthy. So what you have to remember is Kritika, if you see, it's the third nakshatra, right? So the third house in, um, in any natal chart is the eighth house from the eighth. So which means, Eighth house is about uh, longevity, okay? And eighth from eighth is the Bhavad Bhavam of the eighth house, and that becomes the third house. So it is the third nakshatra, and that is why you see this connection with uh, with long-lived, you know, living, possessed with vital power, being healthy, being old, being aged. So all this is this association with this, uh, another name of Kritika, which is called as Ayishmat. Now, the fire god or the Kritika was also called as Hautabuja. Hautabuja means, uh, you know, somebody, it is a reference to Kritika and Agni, you know, which is used in Hotar. Hotar is the fire sacrifice or the fire ritual which happens. So you can see that, uh, uh, you know, this nakshatra is all about purification um, and the birth is to purify, to, to be able to be moral and to, uh, to master the virtues of life. So this is what you see with, uh, with uh, the association with Agni. Now, 
Rahul is considered to be uh, you know very active in all the planes which is the physical the mental and the spiritual right now agni is often shown with two heads um, uh, and is seven tongued that is what they say you know with one head having three tongues and um, you know one head having um, you know four tongues so the two heads refer to one which is active on the earth plane and another one which is you know which is devouring the offerings uh, given by the humans and you know the other other mouth is to um, is facing towards the heavens is where he is distributing the 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 sacrifice the sacrificial offering which is given to him uh, through to the respective gods right now um, what you have to know with agni agni as a fire is uh, itself the drive for life so it is the spark of life on this planet so without fire um there would have not been any creation right in that sense kritika could also be a very transformative nakshatra right the fire of digestion in um, the human system or the external fire which cooks your food and nourishes your food so you see that um, you know agni um is worshiped or and rules the southeast direction even in vastu shastra you say the kitchen always has to be in the southeast direction right so in that sense agni is a great purifier he is a great consumer he is a giver of light heat and brightness right so you, what you see with typically with kritika natives is their interest for cooking uh they show sometimes show very strong digestive power and might have a very mighty appetite now when i say that this mighty appetite it could be literal and sometimes it could be when i talk about digestive power it could be uh, figurative could be allegorical so you might want to see the the kritika natives this kritika natives could have uh, uh, you know if it is kritika is associated with their uh, with the third house of communication you can find that their communication could be quite sharp and sometimes with their words uh, is very difficult to digest for the other people because they have not digested the information enough and uh, although they have a great appetite so they want to um, you can see that kritika natives have a desire to amass a lot of knowledge you know uh, more than that more than what they can digest taking too much on the plate right um, so that is what you see you know even in terms of knowledge even in terms of activities you see kritika natives want to take up too many things on their uh, or want to multitasking want to do too many things at the same time and they don't um, go to achieve although they they should be looking at more precision more uh, focused way of doing things so um so these are the the common themes that i've seen which emanate from uh, kritika nakshatra and uh, what i would like to do is maybe take you through uh, a couple of uh, slides which i prepared for uh kritika which will talk more about uh the purification process that uh, kritika natives can you know can uh, uh, go through so let me share my screen uh and let's get uh, to speak a little a couple of minutes on okay so there you are so um i was talking about agni you know and his connection with um uh the ram or the goat now what you see in, in the first pada of uh, kritika which falls in aries um the first division of uh, kritika you see that it is ruled by you know aries is ruled by uh, mars which is mangal okay and you see the symbol which is associated with aries is uh, the ram which is which is shown here in the middle and uh, kritika is uh, ruled in the vimshotri dasha system by uh, by the sun god so if you see his mount is also the ram so you see that there's a lot of ram qualities that you would see in the first um in the first uh, pada right so you can see that energy of uh, aries is also the ram um, mangal He, his mount is also the ram, and Agni's mount is also the ram. So, 
you can see that association which strongly bring you to understand that how this uh, nakshatra will operate they are quite obstinate uh, they're quite crafty at times um, they have uh, a tendency uh, you know what you know if you if you understand the goat as an animal you would find out they have a very unique quality they're called as uh, ruminants uh, because they go through a digestive process called as rumination what is rumination rumination is a way to uh, feed on uh, plant uh, food and then to go through a process of fermenting that food before digesting it and absorbing the nutrients so that is called the rumination process this word room rumination comes from a latin word called uh, uh, ruminare you know ruminare means to constantly chew over and over again so these animals you know, goats have a tendency to st uh, store food in their stomach and and whenever they want to they would bring that food back into the uh, the mouth and chew that so that they can break down the plant into uh, you know much easier ways which and be able to absorb all the nutrients what uh, the plant kingdom is giving them so in that sense they have a very unique digestive system and they are able to completely digest and absorb all the nutrients that is the process of the rumi, uh, rumination that i'm talking about so typically what you see with kritika natives is the same thing is either they are able to digest all the content which is given to them whether it is knowledge whether it is wisdom whether it is uh, you know uh, some learnings and understandings either they are able to digest it completely or if there are malefics influencing them in their life then you see this ascendancy of indigestion so half cooked knowledge that they would have and they would want to show that they have a lot of knowledge even with this half cooked knowledge so this is the tendency that you see typically in the pada one pada 2 3 and 4 they fall in uh, the taurus part and taurus is a little more aggressive why because in taurus you find that there is um, there is this opposing forces working together because sun which is the the ruler of kritika nakshatra and uh, venus which is the rashi lord of taurus they are inimical uh, they're not friendly to each other they enemies so obviously you see this materialistic tendencies which is more uh, rajasic you know the rajasic gunas are more prominent in the, the last three padas and the first pada is more tamasic because of um, you know the typical nature of uh, mars which is associated here right now this is something which uh, will astonish many people because see goats are supposed to be uh, this is not a photoshopped image this is how the goats are supposed to be you know the goats are quite naturally very curious and inquisitive uh, creatures and whenever they are surviving in arid environments like uh, you know that is very less uh, vegetation on the ground um they are quite they're supposed to be quite agile and adaptive so they 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 are known to climb trees and to feed on um the leaves of the trees right so that way what you see is this this tendency of uh, of uh, the goat you also see in kritika natives they can go to places and Uh, climb and balance themselves in very precarious places you look at the mountain goat the mountain goat can go to places where i don't think any other animal could ever go they have great sense of balance um, and they have this ability an uncanny knack to also discover uh, faults in the fence fences that you put so if you are if you are breeding uh, goats the goats are supposed to be very very uh, uh, you know cunning and looking at faults in the fences and once they discover the fault they are very easy to sneak through that and to get past that and that is what you see in kritika natives as well kritika natives are very canny ability to look and fish out for loopholes in the system whether it be the legal system whether it uh, you know uh, be looking at loopholes of a person try to attack him you know to take pot shots at him so these are typical ways or precarious ways of looking and how kritikas would want to uh, operate and so you see this obstinate uh, rebellious um, you know head on 
you know that is what the head it is associated with the head the head of the ram you know so you see this tendency more in the first part of uh, or the first part of kritika now coming to the the, the beautiful side which is the the last three padas you see that mostly the last three padas or largely in general you see kritika is associated with the color white and and you can see the flowers which is which is associated with is the indian jasmine which is the the most fragrant it's called the kunda flower um and the kunda flower um always grows uh, or the indian jasmine always grows in uh, the indian winter and that is why it is called as maga mallika maga means it is the lunar month of maga when it is the winter which is operating here and it is called as maga mallika and the other flower which is associated uh, with uh, kritika is utpala utpala means the indian white lotus lotus now these two flowers are something which can bring that energy back into your life so either you want to offer uh, you know these flowers uh, garlands made of uh, of utpala or uh, you know or with jasmine to uh, surya narayan which is the lord of this nakshatra which is surya which is sun um or to even to be able to do yagnas and have these flowers around in your plate so white is the color which is associated and these are the flowers which is associated for a spiritual person who wants to elevate himself so these are the fruits that you would want to offer and you want to be uh, surrounded by to feel that uh, energy of uh, vitality in trying to bring purity in your life try to bring purification because white is the color which brings purity and that is why you see most of the the saints would also wear white as a color uh, to show purity and and you can also see it in in these times you can also see in india a lot of politicians wear uh, you know white color things to show that they are pure because white and kritika the first pada is all about politics it's all about uh, uh, royalty it's uh, all about the recognition that they want the name and the fame and at the same time they want to show that they're pure and they uh, uh, you know so you see this is a common trait you see in india is most of the politicians want to wear, wear white color so that is again its association with kritika now the other thing that i wanted to talk about um, kritika is the tree which is associated with kritika is odumbara it's called ficus uh, resmosa right now why there are typically you see in hindu mythology and hindu um, uh, in ayurveda in all these scriptures you find that there are two trees which are very very popular one is the people tree and another is the odumbara tree now why are these trees uh, very important or very key is because these trees um, are called as uh, oxygen generators you know they give oxygen 24 by 7 and that is why uh, you know our ancients said you should be going and um, were shipping these trees second day what you see is these trees are divine trees why because you cannot plant them manually and grow them so these trees grow on their own um, you know either by the birds when they eat their food um, and so the odimbara tree is often associated with guru dattatreya it is believed guru dattatreya had re- received enlightenment by sitting under this tree so um, typically uh, you know in um, hindu uh, scriptures it is mentioned it's a you know cutting the tree is like dishonoring the tree and it can bring a lot of sins in your life so this basically is a way of our ancient saying that these trees are f- for maintaining the ecological balance of uh, on planet earth and so please do not cut these trees and let them be there and uh, with that we'll also tr- thrive now the sun god which what we said uh, is the fire light and heat okay of the heavens that is what it is seen it is always in the sky so it is it is the source of fire it's the source of light it's the source of heat in the heavens and at the same time on the earthly plane that we live in agni is the source of fire light and heat so you worship the sun in the heavens and you worship agni here on the earthly plane so that is the association that you see between the sun and agni now uh, what are the rituals that you can perform uh, to go under purification or uh, to go under purification of uh, the body the mind the soul so one of the, the most popular techniques is 
uh, is Surya Kriya, which means lightening the inner fire or activating the energy process internally. And that is by activating your solar flexes is to raising your Samat Prana, which is your solar heat in the body. So this, when you raise the Samat Prana in your body, then it brings the balance into the person's um, uh, channels. It balances, um, you know, the, the nadis as well, the left and the right energy channels. So leading to more stability and stillness of the mind. So this is a great ritual for purification is performing Surya Kriya. Okay. Or also doing Surya Namaskar in the morning. So these are uh, two things that you can uh, perform. One is in, in the form of asanas, which is Surya Namaskar. And one is going through this process of Surya Kriya, which is generating the solar energy within you. Now, another way of achieving the same thing is a purification of uh, the body, mind, and soul uh, through Agni Kriya. Agni Kriya is, uh, you, sh you see this uh, uh, thing of drawing the power from um, the source of Agni, which is uh, the source of light, heat, and energy for us on the earthly plane, and trying to draw this energy. So whenever people in a group do Agni Kriya by chanting mantras and putting their hands on the Agni, that's when you draw a lot of positive energies, okay, which uh, revitalizes your uh, key cells in the body and gives you a feeling of well-being. So any day you want to go, you can have a bonfire, go and, you know, and in this, as a group you can do some chants and you can, in, um, you, you can derive that energy and you can feel that joy, you know, build up within you. So people who have done Agni Kriyas always come and say they are overjoyed. They are gone through a sort of a purification process. They have burned some of their negativities in their life. So these are two themes that I've often seen which helps individuals to come out of this. Um, you know, the negative tendencies that Kritika Nakshatra often brings. Right? So, um, with that, what I want to do is uh, I want to say, uh, you know, today being a Kritika Nakshatra, um, I wanted to say that uh, this is going to be a great day uh, and it's a very favorable day for doing uh, fire worship, uh, for doing purification rites, for uh, doing cooking, embroidery, sewing, uh, anything to do with shaving, cutting, you know, getting a haircut, um, you know, getting a good shave. Um, it is also good to be very honest and frank on uh, these days. Uh, Kritika Nakshatra is also about getting into, um, you know, constructive debates and criticism for people to, um, to grow, getting involved with extracurricular activities. But however, when you say that uh, this day is not very favorable for social interactions, for uh, showing diplomacy, uh, it's not a day because uh, Mishra Nakshatras are... Uh, or active nakshatra, so it's not a day for relaxation, it is not a day for rest, uh, and it is not a day for uh, doing activities which involve uh, uh, water, right? Because the Agni element, the Agniya, Agniya element is much more stronger today. Um, another thing that you see with Kritika nakshatra is their strong association with ghee, you know, clarified butter, and with gold. So you see that uh, the, their association with gold um, is their one, it could be their liking for gold, gold objects, or uh, it could in, 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 uh, in uh, uh, metaphorically, it could also mean that critical natives are quite prosperous and wealthy in their life. And the ghee element, clarified butter, that is why you can see it's purified butter. Okay, the ghee element is what which gives you nourishment, which gives you strength in the body. So adding a little bit of ghee with your food, uh, when you have uh, with rice, you can mix just rice and ghee, which is good for your digestive system. It also burns the fat as per Ayurveda, it burns the fat in uh, you know the stomach region and gives you more energy. You know, ghee gives you more energy, the vital energy that you require uh, to run your body and to run your digestive systems and your metabolism. So. That is uh, the nurturing quality of this uh, nakshatra, of, of this nakshatra, right? So um, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video. Um, 
please share your feedback on this nakshatra series i'm, I'm running every day and um, you know see you soon tomorrow